All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me for a 60 minute restorative yoga class. This is a floor based yoga class. You don't need uh, any fancy yoga props. You either want a yoga mat or a carpeted area like I'm on, and then maybe some household pillows of different sizes and maybe a blanket too, but no fancy props. So restorative yoga is a gentle, uh, slow paced version of yoga where we use props like pillows and blankets to help support us. Sometimes, um, you know, we associate restorative yoga with yin yoga because some of the postures and the length of holds on postures are similar. But keep in mind that in yin yoga, the goal is to really like work into connective tissue, work into joints and muscles versus restorative yoga is really about um, the mental benefits. And we're, you know, using yoga postures to help us enter into a more relaxed state. So it's not about like getting the deepest stretch. It's really just about, you know, leaving class feeling rejuvenated, restored, relaxed. Um, we're going to start actually with a self-soothing technique called havening um, or self-havening. Uh, it's a relatively new therapeutic technique that's based in neuroscience. The idea is kind of like, you may or may not know this, but if you hug yourself, your body does not know the difference between you hugging yourself and someone else hugging yourself. And even just like squeezing or touching certain parts of your body can help to release serotonin. Uh, it's a really wonderful technique. Anytime you are feeling like anxious or a little bit sad, you can use these self-havening techniques um, to kind of release serotonin and GABA in your body. Okay, so you're going to start in a comfortable seated position, whatever that is for you. Maybe you rock back and forth a couple times, then just sit up nice and tall. You can roll your shoulders forward, backward. And just relax your shoulders, lift your chest, relax your jaw. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. You're going to start just by um, taking your hands and lightly almost like petting your eyebrows along the side of your face and down your chin. So it's just a gentle stroking above the eyebrows and then around the side of the face, down towards the chin. And you're almost gonna treat yourself here. Like, you know, if you have like a favorite dog that you, that you pet lovingly, you're almost gonna treat yourself kind of like you're lovingly petting a furry friend. So you're just gently, gently applying just a little bit of pressure. You're not poking, just the outside of upper eyes and then around the sides of the face. Good. Now we're going to do the under eyes. Same thing, just almost like petting your body, not applying too much pressure. As you try this self havening, the self soothing technique, just consciously breathing in and out through your nose. Good. From here, you're just going to cross your arms and give yourself a nice big squeeze. And again, our body doesn't know the difference between um, being hugged by someone else and hugging yourself. Even just squeezing like this is a great way to release serotonin in the body. And you're lovingly just going to like pet your arms. So drawing from the shoulders down to the elbows. And do this at a rate that feels soothing calming as you breathe through your nose. And last but not least, you're going to take your palms and just sort of swipe along from your elbows down the forearms through the fingertips. Let's just repeat that cycle one more time. 
starting by just applying a light, gentle pressure just above the brows, through the side of the face, down the chin, just in a loving manner. And then just below the eyes, through the side of the face, down the chin. Give yourself a nice squeeze here, hugging tight. And then use your hands, gently petting yourself from your shoulders down to your elbows. At a pace that feels soothing for you. And then last but not least, taking your palms and swiping from elbow through the forearms to the fingertips. Again, in a way that feels good, just using sensory touch to calm the central nervous system. And anytime you're feeling a little bit anxious or sad, these um, sensory techniques, even if you just do them to yourself, right? Are a really wonderful way to calm the central nervous system. Okay, and as you're ready, you can bring your arms down. And again, that's called havening or self havening. Um, and it's a, a sensory therapeutic technique based in neuroscience that's used um, a lot of times for like trauma informed therapy. I'm not a therapist, I'm a yoga teacher, but it's a really simple bodily technique that brings you back into your body whenever you're feeling a little bit anxious. You can use that anytime that it um, kind of speaks to you if it did speak to you. So our first yoga posture of the day is a child's pose, a very grounding posture. You're going to make your way onto all fours. You can either have knees and feet together or feet together and knees separated. Opening up your knees um, will open the hips more. Know that we will do another hip opener later on in class. And you can, you know, bring your knees a little bit apart or a lot apart or close together. And from here, you're going to sink your hips down and bring your forehead to the floor. Now there's lots of versions of child's pose and um, you can also play around with you that using props here. So for example, if there's a big gap between your hamstrings and your calves, you can place some pillows there so that you feel more support. You're also welcome to place um, pillows under your head or under your chest. You can have your arms long or arms down by your side can either have your forehead on the floor or just look to one side. So take a moment here, grab any props that you think um, would feel good or are calling to you. We're going to hold here for five minutes. As you inhale through your nose, feel your ribs expand. As you exhale to your nose, feel your ribs gently contract. Breathe in and breathe out. So on a physical plane, this posture right is stretching out the toes, the ankles, the knees. You might feel it in your hips. I certainly do. And again, the more that you open your knees, the more of a hip opener you'll get. At the same time, you're really lengthening from the lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, all the way through the neck. If you have your arms forward, it's a nice shoulder stretch as well. You can always, again, have your arms out to the side or down by your side. So those are the physical benefits of child's pose. I should also say that uh, typically your hips are a little bit higher than your head. So you're also getting a little extra blood towards the brain. On more of a, um, like, psychological, emotional, spiritual level. This is a deeply grounding posture, right? You can really feel your body supported by the floor. I just invite you to let the floor, any props you're using support you. So again, in a yin yoga class, we might also hold child's pose for five minutes, but we would talk more about, you know, working the connective tissue and a fascia and the joints versus in restorative yoga, right? We're using this posture um, just to allow ourselves to relax. 
kind of to take a step back from the outside world and just slow down. If there's something in your life that you would like restored, whether it's a sense of peace or a joy, maybe curiosity, creativity, maybe setting some boundaries, whatever that is, take a moment to identify something you'd like restored. And any time that um, you find yourself a little bit lost in your yoga practice, you can just come back to that. So for example, if you want to, you know, if you find that you're kind of overly harsh on yourself, you can use yoga, use restorative yoga as an opportunity just to be really gentle with yourself, right? So if um, how you're holding this posture doesn't feel good, go ahead and, you know, maybe open your knees more, or bring your knees closer together, can change how your arms or your head is, maybe looking to the other side. And you can also grab a prop if that feels good. We're gonna hold here for two more minutes. All right, take a slow inhale through your nose. If you'd like, open your mouth and let it go. If you're ready, you're going to very slowly look forward. Walk your hands in under your shoulders. Take your time, slowly pass yourself up. There's no rush. You're welcome to make any movements with your body that feel good, maybe stretching out the legs. Okay, and then as you're ready, you're gonna make your way onto your back for Savasana or Puddle Pose. Okay, so you can open your arms and legs as much as feels good and close your eyes. And right away, just observe what you're feeling. Could be maybe a change in temperature of your feet, maybe a little bit of stiffness in the hips, or maybe you notice that um, all that blood that was in your head is now kind of going back into your heart. So maybe a little bit of dizziness. Maybe you notice a little bit of a change in perception or even a feeling of um, sadness or joy or, you know, whatever, anger, whatever that is coming up. The same way that, you know, holding a yoga posture and releasing a yoga posture can give us feelings in like our toes or our shoulders. 
Um, it can also give us feelings in like our heart, right? And our gut and our head. So just observing whatever that is without judgment or the need to explain. Lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to you. You're welcome to either bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor and your knees rest together, or you can also grab a small blanket or pillow and put it under your lower back so there's more support to the lumbar spine. It's very common for the lower back to kind of like hurt uh, when the legs are straight. So again, you can grab a little prop for under your lower back or just bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor. When you're ready, you're going to bend your legs so your feet are on the floor if they're not already. Take your time rolling off to one side. Place your hands on the floor and slowly press yourself up. Next, we're going to do a supported back bend. So you're going to grab some pillows. And the idea here is you're going to sit with your um, back to the pillows. You want one kind of bigger pillow or a couple, you know, small pillows for under the lower back, middle back and then a pillow for underneath your head so that your head's not just hanging off. And as you're ready, you're just gonna lie on your back. So the idea here is um, the middle spine is like perhaps the most um, compressed in a healing way, but again, your head is not hanging all the way off, right? So your, your chest lifts, you're opening through the front of the body and it might take a minute to find the right ratio of like pillows or blankets or whatever that is. Uh, once you've found your sweet spot with pillows and blankets, you can bring your arms out to the side for like a big open gesture, stretching through um, the heart meridian. You can also bend your elbows and cactus them like goalposts. Or, you know, depending on how lifted your chest is and how long your arms are, you can also place like one hand over your heart and one hand over your abdomen. So whatever feels good for you. From here, you can keep your legs bent with your feet on the floor or you can have your uh, legs nice and long. And we're gonna hold here for five minutes. Um, okay, checking the time, great. So, you know, if this was yin yoga, right, I would talk about how we're working through the heart meridian, how we're stretching the fascia on the chest, right? It's a, a gentle stretch to the whole front of the body, healing compression to the back of the body, especially in a world where we tend to hunch forward a lot, back bends are really good for back health. So that's kind of the physical side of this posture, but again, like mental, emotional, spiritual side of this posture, uh, back bends can also kind of stimulate the central nervous system. And if you've done other styles of yoga with me, you know that there are many different styles of back bends and a lot of them were standing up or were kneeling. Uh, using pillows on the floor is a really great way to get um, a back bend with, you know, with complete support, right? So there's like no fear that you're going to fall backwards, right? Or tip backwards or anything like that because you're on the floor. So really, you know, use these props here and let the floor hold you up. Know that you are, you know, really held, really grounded. And if you'd like an affirmation for this heart opener, this back bend, and simply repeat to yourself, I am enough. I am enough. So sometimes when we do back bends, when we do heart openers, we release some tension or even some emotion from the front of the body. So if you notice any sensations coming up, you just notice them without judging them, just observing compassionately. If you ever find your mind wandering, just returning to your breath or, your to, or to your affirmation, I am enough.
holding here for two more minutes. If you need to adjust how you're lying, if you need to add or remove props, go for it. Otherwise, just enjoying your own company. I am enough. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And if you'd like to open your mouth and let go of anything that you want to let go of. There's a couple different ways to come out of this back bend and whichever way you want to go out, I encourage you to do it slowly and carefully. You could, of course, tuck your chin in, put your elbows on the floor and push up. You could roll off to one side and then release the pillows. Or if you'd like, you can bend your legs, put your feet on the floor, squeeze your tush, lift your hips, removing um, the pillow or pillows from under the middle back. And then if it feels good, removing the pillow from underneath the head, you just set those pillows off to the side woo, and return to lying on the floor. And again, you might notice that maybe, you know, your blood flow is shifting. Sometimes the release from a posture can be as intense as the posture itself. So you might feel a certain like emotion come up, even if that's a little surprising. We're just lying on the floor between every posture to let the body sort of reset. So, you know, again, in that posture, we did a gentle extension to the front of the body, gentle healing compression to the spine. And now we're just letting the body even out and realign. And even though you wouldn't necessarily want to like sleep on a hard floor, although I have met people who do it and swear by it, even though you wouldn't necessarily want to like sleep on a hard floor, it's really useful for yoga, right? Savasana, this corpse pose, sometimes called puddle pose or a rebound in between postures, right? It's a really great way to let the body realign and reset. In, um, in like medical textbooks or anatomical anatomy textbooks, um, 
and I've always found this kind of interesting, but like if you've ever looked at, you know, a human anatomy uh, textbook pictures, um, corpse pose or savasana puddle pose, whatever name you call it, uh, is actually what's called the anatomical position. And it's, you know, with the toes are falling open, right? The arms are down by the side. So this is kind of like how you would view the body anytime you're looking at an image that's like, here's your shoulder, here's your hip. Um, and I, I think that long before we were studying human anatomy, um, there were people that figured out that like Savatsana, right? It's just like a good way to reset your body. But if you can imagine looking at yourself now from a bird's eye view, and then looking at, you know, kind of like a drawing that you've seen from an anatomy book, you'll notice that they're, you're making the same shape, right? Everything is kind of open and easy to, uh, to see. Okay, as you're ready, you're going to bend your legs. If they're not already, roll off to one side, put your hand on the floor, slowly press yourself up. And you're going to find those same pillows that you use. So um, you're going to sit forward so that this time, rather than, you know, facing away from your pillows, you're just going to face so that um, your hip is next to the pillow. So I'm facing forward with my left hip next to the pillow, the big pillow, and then you'll want a smaller pillow for your head. From here, you're going to start to lie on your side and start to come down. So again, um, the highest part of your body is going to be underneath this big pillow, but then you don't want your head to drop all the way off, right? Um, from here, you can have your left arm, if you're on your left side, left arm forward. If it feels good, you can have your right arm overhead. This is a great way to gently open the right side body. You can keep your knees bent with one foot on top of the other, or you could even straighten your legs if that feels good. I like kind of somewhere in between. So here we're just gently opening the right side body, gently compressing the left side body. We're going to hold here for two minutes. Cool. And if having your arm overhead is like too much of a shoulder or rib stretch, you can always just have your hand down by your side. No right or wrong answer. So again, there's yoga postures, right, where we could get an even deeper stretch to the right side body, even deeper compression to the left side body. If you do 26 into yoga with me, right, you've done half moon pose. But again, restorative yoga is not about getting the deepest stretch or like opening or contorting the body. Uh, it's really just about using gentle yoga postures, using the floor, using props to feel um, a little bit more at ease. You want to leave class with a little bit more maybe like clarity, sense of relaxation and renewal. So make sure that you're, um, you know, accessing the yoga using your body with, with that spirit in mind rather than the spirit of like, I need to feel a deep stretch. Instead, maybe think like, I'd like to feel some deep contentment and inner peace. Okay, from here, we're going to move this into a little bit of a spine and abdominal wall twist. If your right arm or the arm that's on top is overhead, you're going to slowly bring your hand out to the side of your pillow. Gently unthread the needle, bring that left hand back. And from here, start to move your abdomen down towards your pillow so that um, your bottom hip is still on the floor, hips are stacking on top of each other but your abdomen moves towards the floor. You can have your elbows out to the side, depending on what feels good for you. Some folks like to have their home flat down. I like to look to one side so you can look to the right. Or for a really intense spine twist, you could look to the left, but for me, that's quite an intense spine twist and um, I'm not you know, using this as a, as a means to like get the deepest twist. 
So I'm just going to look to the right. So on a uh, physiological level, right, it's a nice gentle spine twist, nice abdominal wall twist. Um, twisting the abdomen like this is good for digestion. And twisting the spine like this is also really good for back health. Um, I think spine twists are kind of the unsung hero of spinal health. You, if you sit at a desk all day, you've probably figured out by now that it's good to like stand up once an hour, put your hands on your back, do a little back bend, but make sure you're doing some spine twists as well. It's a really great way to reset the back. And again, in yoga, there's you know deeper abdominal wall and, and um, spine twists out there, but this one is just a really gentle way to kind of gently twist the spine. And gently twist the abdomen. We're gonna hold here for three minutes, two minutes left. Take a slow inhale to your nose. If it feels good, you can sigh it out. If you're looking to one side, gently lift your head and look forward. Place your hands on the floor. Slowly press yourself up. No rush. You can make any motions with your body that feel good. Go ahead and remove the pillows from underneath you. Lie down on your back, letting everything stretch out and realign. Just passively observing any changes or shifts in the body. And notice if you're quick to judge what you're observing. Just practice a little bit of non-judgment, a little bit of compassion for yourself. So you're ready, you're gonna roll off to one side, maybe the side you haven't rolled off to yet. Slowly press yourself up. And let's do the other side of that uh, spine stretch and twist. So I'm gonna face the other way so I continue to face you. And keep in mind that this side might feel different. So don't be around, to, don't be afraid to play around with different ratios of like pillows and, and blankets and all that fun stuff. 
Okay, so sitting with your right hip or your other hip next to the pillows, you're gonna slowly bend those legs, slowly start to lie down on your side. Again, you can have your underarm, your right arm facing forward and your upper arm, your left arm on top, or maybe one or both arms kind of down by your side. And just a gentle opening to the left side body, never a point of pain. If you'd like an affirmation here, you can silently repeat to yourself, I do not need to earn rest. I do not need to earn rest. Or if you'd like a um, more positive rather than a negative version of that, you can say, I am inherently worthy of rest. I am inherently worthy of rest. I used to sort of pitch um, specifically like restorative yoga, yin yoga, meditation, more like um, slow moving, quiet embodied practices as, you know, I used to pitch them as being like, oh, they're good for focus. They're good for concentration, good for productivity at work, right? Like you take a step back so that you can, you know, show up and be more present at work with your family, with your friends. And all of this is true, right? There's like Lots of studies out there showing that you know meditation, mindfulness, some simple yoga postures can help to increase productivity at work, for example. Uh, but the truth is, I, I really believe that like this is not why we should be doing yoga, right? It should be doing yoga, meditation, mindfulness, things like self-havening, uh, just because it feels good <laughs> and because it reminds you of like how loved you are, right? How wise you are helps give you a little bit more energy, maybe a little bit more peace or relaxation. Um, but yoga, right, this relaxation or restorative practice can be an end in and of itself. You don't need to use it as a tool, you know, to like become more productive at work or, you know, to be more present with your friends or families. Those are really lovely side effects. Um, but I hope that you do this for you, all just for you. If you have your left arm overhead, you can slowly bring your left hand down close to the pillow, press yourself up slightly, unthread that needle, bring your right hand out to the right, keep your hips stacked, then start to turn your abdomen, your torso down towards the pillow. And you can have your head on your pillow, or maybe you look left and right. Going back to our spine twist, this time on the other side. So in traditional Chinese medicine, um, aches and pains on the back of the body are associated with um, like emotional pain from the past, which makes sense, right? I've talked to many people like when they're going through grief, let's say like the loss of a loved one will uh, experience a lot of back pain versus like aches and pains on the front of the body are, are more associated with like are concerns for the future, right? Have you ever like had a big meeting and you feel like, you know, butterflies in your stomach, right? The front of your body, that makes sense too. Um, the sides of the body are considered like the present moment and twisting the spine like we're doing now um, is considered a way to bring the past and the present into, or sorry, the past and the future into present so that you come into the present moment. So again, in like traditional Chinese medicine, spine twists like this are really good at taking us, you know, out of the past or out of the future and right into the present moment.
take a slow inhale through your nose, maybe really stretching the back of your body with that breath. If it feels good, exhale through the mouth, letting it all go. Gently lift your head and look forward. Place your hands on the floor and slowly press yourself up. Make any motions of your body that feel good. Then remove those pillows or blankets. Turn, lie on your back for a nice little reset button. Next, we're going to do a hip opener. You can bend your legs if that feels good, so feet close together, and then let your knees open out to the side so the insides of your feet come together. Eventually, the knees will drop all the way down. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. The more you bring your heels in towards your groin, the more you will feel that opening on the hips. If this is too much. You can always bring your feet a little bit further away from you towards the back of your mat. It can also help to place some pillows underneath your knees that you really feel support there. Um, I, for example, have like really flexible hips, but it actually doesn't feel super good to open them all the way. So I will purposely place some pillows underneath my knees so that there's extra support there. And we're going to hold here for five minutes. Again, keep in mind that this does not need to be the deepest hip opener of all time. Um, the goal is just to Enjoy lying on the floor while opening the hips, not to get the deepest stretch. So on a you know, physiological level, right, we're opening the hips, opening the pelvis, really good to have like a nice range of motion in that part of your body. You can have your arms out to the side again, a big expansive gesture. You can have one hand on your, you know, abdomen and one hand on your chest. You can bend the elbows up. So it's also a nice little heart opener here, right? Letting the spine stretch out to the floor as the hips and knees open. And on a more again, like psychological, emotional, spiritual level. Um, hips often hold like a lot of tension in the body. Um, and if, you know, many of you have probably been in a yoga class, maybe even my yoga class where we say like hip openers release emotion. And the first couple times I heard that I would like roll my eyes, like, what do you mean your hips hold emotion, right? Like, what does that mean? Um, but, you know, when we think about like the mind body connection, we sometimes forget that it's a two way street. Um, and in fact, more and more, there's a lot of research being done around how, how it very much is a two-way street. So an easy example is like, let's say your boss yells at you at work. And what do you do, right? Like you punch forward, you tense up, your hips start to like close up. So you have like a, you know, a, somebody, an external factor telling you something, right? That then transfers into your body. Um, that thing gets stored in the body unless we open it up. So think about it this way. When you get stressed, you hunch forward, the hips tense up. So to release that stress, you can open up your hips. And then sometimes that releases it, right? It's a two-way street, goes both ways. Um, so sometimes when folks are in hip openers or back bends or after they come out of it, they'll feel like a sudden urge to cry or to sigh or like maybe like anger or giddiness or joy or just like whatever it is, but it, it's all an involuntary uh, nervous system response, right? It's a really wonderful way to work through tension. So when you hear a yoga teacher say like, you know, 
you store emotion in your hips. That's not like a gauzy, uh, intangible thing. That's like a real, uh, like biological level, like you do actually like process emotion and stress through your body. Um, if nobody has ever told you, uh, like emotions are kind of like tunnels and they have a beginning, middle and end. And where we often get really stressed or experience burnout is when we don't go all the way through that tunnel. So maybe again, like somebody yells at you and you tense up, but then you don't do anything to relieve that tension. Um, and that's where we often start to experience like real anxiety, right? Real like burnout in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, so things like yoga or going for a walk or like, I don't know, you need like a hobby, like knitting or playing music or whatever helps you process that stuff. That'll help you kind of like get through the tunnel of that emotion and get out of that burnout um, stage. And stage. And again, that can feel kind of, or can sound kind of like you know gauzy or airy or not not real. But it's um, there's lots of studies done around it, and I can recommend you some cool books based on it as well. Um, two of which we might read for a book club. So two books I would recommend on kind of like the two way street of the mind body connection are burnout and the body keeps the score. If you would like an affirmation for this posture, we have about three minutes left. If you want an affirmation for this posture, you can tell yourself, I give myself permission to release all that no longer serves me. I give myself permission to release all that no longer serves me. Notice where you might be holding on to some tension in your body. Let it go through the breath. So if you're saying to yourself, you know, I give myself permission to release all that no longer serves me. That can be on a real, you know, like physical level too, right? Like I noticed that my tight hamstrings are not serving me. I give myself permission to relax my hamstrings. Can inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. If it feels good, sigh it all out. There's a couple of ways to come out of this posture. You could simply lengthen your legs back to the back of your mat, or you could place your hands on your outer thighs, bringing your knees together. Maybe move those pillows and blankets and bring your legs down. Ooh, Savasana, puddle pose. You might feel a release in the hips there.
In whatever way feels good for you, make your way back into a seated position. We're gonna do a forward fold. We're only gonna hold it for two minutes. So this is a shorter one. Can um, kind of walk out your sit, your sit bones, your glutes. Have your legs long, but they don't necessarily need to be like super active, right? Just relax legs, maybe a couple inches apart. And from here, you're gonna place as many pillows as you want in between your legs and your chest. You can get creative, have fun, make it your own. We're just gonna fold forward. Take your time finding however many pillows feel good for you. You can either let your spine round, or if this feels like too much pressure on the lower back, you can really wedge the pillows um, between your thighs and your chest and fold forward with a flat back. Otherwise, just letting your head go. We're only gonna fold here for two minutes. This is just meant to be a gentle release through the hamstrings in the back, but not a point of pain. Again, um, especially if you have like a history of slip discs or letting your head go and your spine round does not feel good for your back. Keep your chin a little away from your chest, look forward so that the back is flat rather than rounded. Take a slow inhale to your nose. If it feels good, sigh it out. Look forward if you're not already. Place your hands on either side of the floor. Press yourself up into a seated position. We're gonna go into our final savasana and I'm gonna encourage you to use the pillows here. So if you'd like, we're gonna do um, a lifted leg version of savasana. So the idea here is you're going to put as many pillows as you want underneath your legs <laughs> so that they're elevated. You get the idea. Take your, take your time kind of playing around with what this will look like using however many pillows you want. You can also again place blankets or pillows under the lower back, maybe a pillow under your head. Okay, and place a blanket over your body if that feels good. And as you're ready, you're going to make your way into your final semester. Have your arms down by your side, out to the side. Maybe, you know, hand over your chest or your abdomen, really making it your own. And think back to that, you know, first child's pose that we did, right? And that, um, that intention you set about what you wanted restored, whether it was, you know, maybe compassion, creativity, curiosity, calm, joy, peace, whatever that was. And 
final affirmation is to repeat, I invite whatever that is that you wanted restored into my life. So for example, if you thought, you know, I would like to restore a sense of curiosity, you can silently repeat to yourself, I invite curiosity into my life. If you wanted a deep sense of calm, right? I invite calm into my life. Stay in final savasana for as long as you'd like. If you have, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, take that time. If you have one minute, take one minute. When you are ready to get up, do so slowly, mindfully. And keep in mind, we have been on the floor for a while. So I would encourage, um, you know, maybe sitting up for a while before you stand up so that you're not immediately going into a standing position. Uh, make sure that you're drinking lots of water, even though we were using these postures more for their like, you know, restorative, like emotional benefits. Um, we still definitely like moved around the body and you can sometimes release some stuff there. So the same way that like after a massage, they give you like water, you want to be drinking water after a restorative yoga class, especially because it's summertime. Um, have a wonderful evening. It was great to be here with all of you. Hope to see you soon.